Hello traders, um, Nick Shaheen here looking at RIDE. Uh, they reported earnings today and the reaction was disappointing in the stock market, uh, but it had probably extra weight from the fact that the stock market itself had a little tizzy. Uh, it wasn't down big, but uh, from the top it was. So uh, last Thursday, today is the 25th, May 25th, Tuesday. Last Thursday, there was a big move in the market, and then it fizzled on Friday. Monday, the market opened in a bang, and then if, um, Tuesday morning, it opened, uh, it continued upside and then fizzled. So is this behavior repetitive? Is it going to continue? The reason I mentioned this is because this stock or any other stock has to trade inside the whole market. We don't trade individual stocks in vacuum. So regardless of how good the outcome is going to be from this on this point on, it has to get help from the market. What am, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I may point at a line to say lower than this and the stock will accelerate lower. So and people might get upset. What under six dollars? No way. I'm not saying it's going there on its own, but imagine that let's say one day the market corrects three, four percent. This won't hold all by itself. So it might be dragged down through no fault of its own. Therefore, I'm not insulting the, the outcome of this particular stock, but there could be a scenario that takes it down below there. So be open to it. All right. So fundamentally, there's nothing to discuss as far as financials. I know they reported earnings, but people were probably just waiting to see what are they going to say about the future production? Well, they didn't say anything good. Limited and would be at best 50% of prior expectations. And there it goes. So uh, expectations, that's the problem. What were people expecting and what did the management say based on the expectations? They didn't like the message. All right, so how can I trade the stock? So first, it's clearly a falling knife, right? I would call it a falling machete, 12 inch blade, about an inch handle. So chances are I'm gonna nick myself uh, and uh, maybe lose a digit or two. So I better be sure of what I'm doing. Step one, this is a speculative stock, not a speculative company. This is a real company with hundreds of employees, big companies invested in it. They have a cool looking truck, not my jam. We are, um, you know, hardcore truck users in our house, but they're old school che Chevys. Um, my son builds them for a living, so we can't stray for, for away from that. So legit company. So that's not in question. What's in question is the success of this stock on Wall Street, period, end of story. You can't force people to buy it if they don't want to buy it, right? So given that scenario, I should call it speculative just from that perspective. And if that's the case, I limit the amount of risk I have into it. I don't add to double down because it's not a sure thing as a stock. I double down an Apple, for example, average down, I shouldn't say double down, average down in something that has a PL I can bank on. Here, I have hope. Well, hope is not a strategy, and I sure ain't going to put good money after bad so far, especially if somebody got in up here. I'll show you a little trick how to avoid up here. By the way, um, charts do work. Um, we have a chat room that's open all day every day and we do webinars on Sunday free for like two hours every Sunday so we we talk charts all day today we saw an opportunity in in uh, shorting Bank of America and it worked out 32 to 38 percent depends on how quickly somebody jumped on it in one day but we couldn't do this unless we were trading in one room and there's a link to the room down below check it out it's not free to be in it but it's free to try it out the link will take you to PayPal, but it's for absolutely zero dollars for 10 days. You can cancel at any time. Reason I have it that way, I want to weed out the trolls. I want real people that are looking for real opportunities. The traders are of all styles. I prefer options, but we have all kinds of traders in there. Back to this one, we have fans of it and haters of it in there. So we don't discuss opinions. We just talk about the stock chart price action which will bring us back to here. So how does a stock bottom? Lower highs, lower highs. It bottoms, first of all, you stop making lower lows. You establish a bottom. Step one, accomplished. So it looks like they did that. Second, um, you, you try to make your way back to the accident scene. So the biggest accident scene is right here at 11.6 or seven. And um, so next time when a stock runs into a prior cluster of failure, it's I should tell myself, hey, don't buy it up here. That's what happened last time. Like, for example, an easier way to see this is up here. So somebody that bought it up here, 
So in hindsight, it was a clear mistake, right? They did it twice and three times. But all they had to do is just look left and see that this was a prior failure. Therefore, it's not an obvious point of entry. Is that a fair statement? Not an obvious point of entry. The chance of disappointment is pretty big since that's what happened last time. So until they prove that they can go above it, establish it as footing and then go, I don't bank on it. I don't. I, I would never ever take a long position here unless I'm short term trading a breakout on like a five minute chart. This was fraught with danger right from the get go. Let's say somebody at, bought here. They shouldn't add here. That's my opinion, personal opinion. I would never add. I'm not doing recommendations here, but for me, in a speculative stock where the outcome depends on words from management and not a PNL where I can m m tangibly measure dollars and cents. I would not risk more money. I could take the bet and say this is part of my speculative piece of the pie and I'm okay risking X dollars, but I'm not going to add to it. If it works out great, if it doesn't, I lost some money. Uh, that's it. Grown-ups, not babies. So I wouldn't add to a speculative risk, period. And if I do start a new position, this is as good a place as any, but even then I would make it for for, uh, for a small position. I wouldn't make it outsized to where it's going to break my... It's not a home run maker. I mean, it could be, but that's gambling. So how does it happen? How does it break out? I was discussing it earlier with somebody, so I'm going to redraw it. Um, here, step one. All right. Ignore this part. <laughs> I know you're looking at it. <laughs> Ignore it. Step one. This is a prior failure. So that's the objective. How do they get there? Okay, so they had a tizzy here today. The way the, the candle closed today was not so bad, right? They didn't close at the absolute low. They tried to shrug it off. So what if they just meander for a couple of days? It'd be ideal if they don't lose that. But if it, they do, that's fine as long as they maintain a higher low trend. Um, not as crucial as definitely not losing this part. That is a no-no. If that is lost, uh, not game over, but game changer. So higher lows meander your way back this point i'll explain in a second that's a resistance level i'll explain why and let's say they fail a little bit come back this should take time and they get back to the accident scene that's where the battle starts eventually they want to come up come back test it so they can build upon it okay now why does that uh, here's what the range is tightening all throughout and it comes to a point. And that's where the bulls have built a nice enough base with solid hands, not weak hands. So when a stock does this and then a rallies back, that is weak hand. Whereas here, they took their time building a nice base of investors that are not going to be shaken out at the first bad news, right? So that's how you break out from prior failures. So that would be an ideal way of doing it. So what about this little dongle here? So if you lose this bottom, there is a big question mark. I don't know where it's going. Uh, I, I stopped here not because I wanted to go to $3. I promise you I wanted to succeed. It's a question mark. I don't know where it goes. You're saying, but the truck is coming. It doesn't matter if it, do it is coming or not. It matters whether Wall Street wants to buy the stock or not. Um, there's no logic. They say machines are in control of the price action, right? Like 80% of it. So don't... Uh, uh, um, apply human logic to it. Whatever is going on in the chart is going to continue to go on unless the price action says otherwise. And right now, they're trying to hold the line. They should try to build an ascending trend to tackle the prior breakdown area. So that's as simply and as objectively as you can do. Some people like to trade actively. Those should uh, step lower in time frames to maybe half hour chart that gives you uh, a little bit more clarity. Oh, here comes the orange line again. So let me explain it. Sorry about that. All right, so we'll go back to that one. So um, I don't draw this orange line. Look, it adjusts itself, right? Oh, it's still down there. So it's the point of control. That's the technical term for it. These volume bars here are the same volume bars here. The only difference is that they are posted where they happened. Like this literally tells me that there are two points of interest in this stock, 20 and 10. What does that mean? It means that everybody's hot and bothered at 10. Everybody's hot and bothered at 20. 
There are two groups, almost nothing in between. So anything in between can happen really fast. That's why it slid fast. And it, this is a sticky situation. So they're coming back into a point of contention that has very heavy volume. That's like overhead supply, whatever they call it on Wall Street. I'm not a Wall Street guy, but that's what they love to call it. To me, the machines are going to try to sell the hell out of it until it breaks out from 12, convincingly. So going into 12, the first time around, I would not be a buyer. That's where I would exit if I caught the falling knife. Capiche? Okay, so um, I, did, I just did this in AMC. And um, I posted AMC was running into um, a situation where a prior failure, I said, this is not an obvious point of entry. And I literally drew a dip, like a handle to the cup and handle. And I said, this is where the battle is at X. And guess what? It dipped big time, came back to X. And just today, just today, popped big time above it and ran. It traced out my drawing perfectly. I'm not saying that I was a genius at it, but that was what the machines would have done. So if this one comes back to here and I still haven't decided to go long, it's too late. Wait for it to fade or take it out. That would be my perspective. That's looking forward because I know it's going to happen. They're going to say, should I buy it? No, shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? And then it gets here. It's okay. I'm going to buy it. Trap. It uh, stopped out. And then it comes back and blows out. Oh, man, I missed it. So these are things that typically happen. Sometimes there are exceptions, but I would rather bet on the rule rather than the exception. So hopefully these guys can snap a win next time around because it's been a stinker after a stinker after a stinker. I'm looking at the earnings report. That one was good. So whatever they said in September, they should repeat it next next quarter. Nick signing out.